Hey friends, what if I told you that you can find any answer you're looking for in life using your emotions? Whether that is finding the best thing to say in a certain moment or knowing what to do or knowing when to act, your emotions tell you so much. They are the answer key, the decoder ring, the cheat code to life. So today we're gonna to talk about 10 things that your emotions tell you that can make your life easier, happier, and more in flow with the goals and dreams you have. Stick around. Hi guys, my name is Chris. Welcome to my new YouTube channel. Super fun. A new YouTube channel. Whoa, those never happen. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to uh, the video. Thanks for being here. I'm here to teach you some common sense, logical mindset cheat codes that you can use in your life to make it easier and happier and more in flow with whatever dreams and goals your heart is looking for in life. I'm going to tell you some really logical ways that you can make those things happen. Oh, God, that feels good to even just say. Today, we're gonna to talk about 10 things that your emotions tell you because truly, your emotions are the key to everything. And once I started to understand what my emotions mean and how to use them in my life, it changed everything. By the way, if you're new here, or and you definitely have to be because I'm new here, if you're someone who wants to learn how to listen to yourself and learn how to use your emotions to guide you, I created this really cool cheat sheet on how to do that. It's called the Vibe Guide. You can get it in the description below. It's completely free, and it's a one-page cheat sheet that you can print out for your wall or your desk or your mirror or your fridge as just a reminder of simple, easy steps that you can take to feel out your way through life and listen to yourself as your compass. And I'm telling you, doing so is game changing. So check it out. And today let's get into 10 things that your emotions tell you. Let's do it. Number one, your emotions tell you what kind of headspace you're in. Keep it simple. I group this into two categories, feeling good and feeling bad. There's no reason to get any more complicated than that. If you feel good, and I would define that as any good feeling emotion, whether that's love, joy, freedom, appreciation, empowerment, relaxation, comfort, peace, whatever the good feeling is, that's telling you that you are currently in a good headspace, a positive headspace. On the flip side, whenever you're feeling bad, however you define that negative feeling, whether it's fear, sadness, insecurity, anger, jealousy, frustration, whatever the negative feeling is, that's telling you that you're currently in that moment in a negative headspace. And just knowing that difference can help you navigate your day because then you can start doing certain things when you know you're in good head spaces and you can do and not do other things when you're in negative head spaces. That's what the vibe guide is for. So definitely check it out. It'll tell you exactly what you can do. But just knowing the difference of what kind of headspace you're in makes a huge difference in the kinds of ways you can navigate your day and your life and the kinds of results that you can get. Number two, your emotions tell you when you're focused on things that are helpful to moving you towards your dreams and goals. Whenever you feel good, and again, any positive emotion, it means that you're currently, right now, focused in ways that are helpful to you. It means you're focused on the things that you care about and that you want. It means that you're focused on things that are going to move you in those directions. And on the flip side, if you feel negative, and I mean any negative emotion, whether it's light or heavy, that is telling you that you are currently focused on what you don't want. You're currently focused in ways that are not helpful to you. And you're currently focused in ways that are not moving you towards those goals and dreams that you have in mind. So just knowing that the direction that you are pointing 
based on what your emotions are telling you is a huge difference maker because then you can be alerted to when you're on trains of thought that are not helpful to you and you can shift those trains of thought. <sighs> okay. Number three, your emotions tell you what you want in life. Everything we want, all of the dreams and goals we have for ourselves are because we think that we will feel better in achieving them or in having them or in being them or in getting them. So emotions are behind everything we want. Think about it. No matter what your dream is, whether it's more money, whether it's a new relationship or a better relationship or more friendships or more travel or a new job or more freedom or more self-love or more cool experiences, a specific thing that you want to happen in your life. No matter what it is, it's ultimately because of the feeling behind it. There's always an emotional piece behind it because ultimately we just want to be happy. And so we find things and we want things that will make us feel happy. And so if you know that, then you can figure out those things that you really, that are the real dreams. Your real dreams are those things that fill you up inside with love and joy and excitement and passion. And so keeping that in mind, we can know what dreams we actually care about and we actually want and which, what things in the world are not really for us. Number four, your emotions tell you what you're going to say. Depending on how you feel, you'll say things in different ways. If you're feeling insecure, if that's the emotion that you're feeling, you're going to say things that are doubtful and insecure and unconfident and unassured. And like, you're going to have that self-critical um, angle and tone and vibe to what you say and how you interact with people versus if you are feeling confident, then the words that you use and what you choose to talk about and how you choose to talk about those things will have a vibe and a energy of confidence and empowerment and strength. Even if you don't think that people are picking up on that, I think as people, as humans, we just naturally, organically pick up people's vibes, even if we don't consciously know it. And so knowing that your emotional state affects what you say and how you say it can have a big effect on the world around you and the people around you. So keep it in mind. Number five, your emotions tell you what you're going to do. So depending on how you feel, you're going to be making different choices in your day. Even down to micro choices that we're not even really consciously thinking about. But this is very logical. Let's say you're feeling nervous about something. You're going to be making different choices from that nervous mindset than you are if you are feeling empowered and confident and sure of yourself. And that will obviously logically result in different outcomes it will manifest different things. So keeping that in mind, keeping your emotions in mind and how you feel when you go about your day making choices makes a huge difference in terms of what actually manifests out of it, in terms of the results that you can actually get. So keeping it in mind, huge, huge advantage, huge superpower, huge benefit, and highly, highly recommended. Number six, your emotions tell you how you're going to interpret the world around you. This is a huge piece of life, but it's not something that a lot of people think about. It's like, remember we were just talking about how emotions affect what you say and what you do. Those are things that we put out into the world, but they also affect what we take in. Our emotions, negative and positive, are like the filter that we have in front of us that we interpret everything through. So what we see is affected by our emotions. What we hear is affected by our emotions. 
We've all experienced this before. Like if you are feeling negative, if you're feeling self-conscious, let's say, you're going to see things and hear things from other people that you're going to interpret as criticism or as blame or as whatever matches that internal feeling that you have, even if the other person did not mean for that or was not even thinking about that at all. And that's because our emotions are the filter that we see life through and that we hear life through. So if you know that your interpretation is based off what you're feeling, you can keep your emotions in mind when you're deciding whether you should trust that interpretation or not. If you're feeling insecure because someone hasn't gotten back to you, you're gonna fill in those blanks with like, oh, they're probably mad at me, they probably hate me, what did I do? Oh, did I say something stupid? Do they not like me anymore? It's so natural to fill in the things we don't know with reasons that match the way we feel inside. And so if you can change the way you're looking at things and change how you feel inside, that is a huge change that you can make by just being aware of that piece. Number seven, your emotions tell you the kinds of stories you're telling yourself. We all tell ourselves stories all day, every day. Some of those stories are good and help us. Some of those stories are not good and not helpful to us. And we all have a mix of good and bad ones that we use that we've kind of practiced for a while. It's basically the self-talk that we use, the beliefs that we have. And so some examples of some good stories that we can tell ourselves would be like, um, I'm good at what I do, or I'm confident in myself, or I'm good at making friends, things like that. Those are positive, good feeling stories. And on the flip side, some negative stories that are common for us to tell ourselves are, I suck, I at, suck that. at that. I'm not, I'm good, not at good, that. good at that. I can't, I can't figure, figure it, out. it out. Nobody, Nobody likes, likes me. me. It's hard, it's to, hard make to make friends. friends. Those are negative stories. And no matter what you're saying, you're going to see more evidence that will continue to prove that story right. It will continue to prove you right. If you know that your emotions tell you the kinds of stories that you are telling, then you can use those to filter out the ones that you don't actually want to be telling yourself anymore. So if, you, if you're telling yourself a story and it feels good, those are the ones you wanna keep. Keep doing that, keep telling yourself that, keep vibing in that mindset. And if what you're telling yourself is negative and it feels bad, then you know that those are the stories that you want to ultimately change. And we can go more in depth into how to change the stories you're telling yourself. It's a huge piece of like changing your life. So if you want a video on how to change the stories you're telling yourself, comment below, let me know, and I'll make a video on that. Number eight, emotions can help you understand why people do what they do and say what they say, which can make your life way easier because let's say that someone snaps at you. If you can zoom out and look at that situation from an emotional perspective of like, what's the emotions going on right now? That person is clearly in an angry emotional place, which means they're in an, an angry negative headspace, which means they're, they only have access to thoughts that are rude and mean and angry and bitter and resentful. That's the ideas that are coming to their head from the headspace that they're in. That's all that's going on. You know the common saying of like, when someone is mean to you or rude or acting shitty, that it has way more to do with them than it has to do with you? That's what this is. If you understand that the only reason they're saying those things is because they're in a negative headspace themselves, it can help you feel less guilt or less negativity yourself because you can understand that you are separate from that. 
It has to do with the mindset they're in. It has to do with the headspace they're in. If they were in a different headspace, they would react completely differently to the same exact situation. And so that can allow you to let yourself off the hook for when people are rude or mean or yelling or whatever, you can separate yourself and understand that just because someone else is in that frame of mind doesn't mean that you have to be. You can then proceed to live your life in your own headspaces, in the headspaces you choose to live, in the ways that you choose to live, and it just makes life so much easier when you can practice doing that. Number nine, your emotions tell you when you're in a state of flow. And flow is one of the coolest things. It's one of the coolest elements of living life. And it's one of my favorite things to teach people. And it's pretty easy because you it's all on the feeling. If you feel good, you're in a state of flow. If you feel negative, if you feel bad, you're, you're out, out of flow. flow. That's all. I love living my life mostly in flow. Um, it's that thing that makes life feel easy and smooth and like, it doesn't matter what happens. I know I can figure it out. It's that vibe of like, it doesn't mean bumps don't come up in the journey, but it does mean that most of the time you don't even see them as bumps anymore. And even the bigger bumps, you kind of start to see those um, challenges as opportunities that you can figure out. And it makes life feel way easier and way smoother. So um, if you want to know whether you're in a state of flow or not, check with your emotions because they'll tell you. And number 10, your emotions tell you what you're going to get back from the universe. This is super logical and common sense, but whatever you put out there is what kind of reaction you're most likely going to get back. So for example, if you put out, if you go out with negative energy and you yell at someone, the response is probably going to be negative back. They're either gonna yell at you back and show aggression back, or they're gonna feel insecure, which is also a negative emotion. They're gonna maybe shut down and feel insecure and walk away. That's also a negative emotion. So like that negative energy that you put out is what is going to be matched most of the time by other people around you that you interact with. And same thing goes for positive emotions. If you go out into the world and you smile at someone else, they're probably most likely gonna smile back at you. If you are complimentary and loving and caring and kind to other people, they're most likely going to reciprocate those positive emotions back to you and give you similar vibes back. So keep in mind what you're putting out there because that's what you're going to receive from other people. It's just naturally how we interact. Emotions are contagious, good and bad. So what you put out is what you're going to see uh, come back to you. And that is super logical, super common sense, but also super good to know. Because if you know that, then you can more consciously start putting out the kind of vibes you want to see more of in your life and putting less of the negative vibes that you don't want to see out so that you can see less of that. Oh, <sighs> anyway, those were 10 things that your emotions tell you. They are so powerful. And by the way, guys, like it is one of the joys in my life to be able to share this kind of stuff with other people who are interested in that and want to hear it themselves and want to learn this kind of stuff, whether it be how to listen to themselves, how to use their emotions as their guide, how to live in flow or manifest cool things for their life, or just live a life that feels easier and happier. That's what I'm all about. I love sharing it with people. If you got any kind of insight or epiphany or light bulb moment today by watching this video, do me a favor. A, share it with other people, share it with friends who you think could use it or family that you could think could use it. I feel like this is so helpful to so many people and just we're not always thinking about it. And so I wanna be a voice out in the world that reminds us all to keep thinking about these kinds of things because they help and they're good and they're logically helpful to us. 
Um, also be sure to like and subscribe. I would love to do some live streams and I don't think, I think I have to meet a certain amount of subscribers in order to go live. So you'll be doing me a huge favor and helping me share this with more people if you subscribe to the channel and you'll get alerted, I think, this. I think this is how it works. You'll get alerted for future videos that I have out. So keep an eye out for that. And don't forget if you want to learn how to listen to yourself or use your emotions as your guide, Guide, use your own self to guide you in life, check out the vibe guide. It's in the description below. It's completely free. It's super easy to use and it will make logical, obvious uh, changes and big ones. I could speak from experience and from the people who I've taught this to and who have practiced it. It really works and it's logical why it would. So check that out and I will talk to you guys soon. Love you.